people live. Renters are an extremely vital part of our business. And you're going to run into some clients or some realtors that say, oh, I don't work with renters because it doesn't leave a high margin of income or something like that. However, it's a very quick way for you guys to put money in your pocket very quickly because renters will eventually become homeowners, especially if you work them correctly. So you want to utilize the rental leads in a format that you can immediately put them into your database and they start to receive your information on a consistent basis. Once they start to receive your information consistently, at the moment they do decide to become a homeowner, you guys are gonna be the ones they call. What I do not want you guys to do is to rent someone a property and all of a sudden you forget about that person and the person never knows, never hears about you again. The time that they go do, when they do go to, to buy a house, you're not the person that they're thinking about because you haven't been in touch with them, right? So there are a few things that I want you guys to do every time you get a rental lead. For example, you can sit right here, John. For example, Erica is new. I don't know if all of you know Erica Barberi, but she's new, and she has been receiving some rental leads. Erica, what do you do when you receive a rental lead? And I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. I just want you know the, the other agents to get an idea of what the process should be, and I'm going to interject on some things. So tell us a little bit about what you do. So I send you a text, and I say, hey, this person wants to rent. And you take it from there. So I reach out to the customer, introduce myself. Uh, if they don't answer, I send a proper message. So if, depending on the specifics I get from you, mm -hmm. I'll know where to start. Um, if you give me a customer, you tell me, here's the name, here's the number, call them then I would first introduce myself. I tell them, you know, I'm, look, I'm working directly with him so they know that I'm referred by him and not that I'm just some random realtor trying to reach out to them so they don't reject the call right away. Once I introduce myself, then I kind of get a little bit of what they're looking for, what their needs are, how many rooms. Once I have that, then I send them all my contact information and I put them in the system right away. Start sending them all the listings. I schedule a meeting with them prior to start sending them listings, to meet in person and get all the paperwork. So when it's a rental, I ask for ID, I ask for two months of bank statements, I ask for um, the pay stubs for the last two months, and then depending if it's Section 8 or not, then we require additional information. Right. Perfect, perfect. So, the phone interview that you're having with the tenant, extremely important because this is where you're discovering what type of tenant this person may be. You know, so for example, uh, if you meet a person and he says, uh, I want to rent a four bedroom, two bath in Homestead, Florida City, Color Bay, and you say, okay, great, I'll be happy to help you. Uh, are you currently working? Yes, I'm working. What do you do for a living? I'm a gardener, I cut grass, you know, for a living. And by the way, some of these people that cut grass for a living make an outstanding amount of money. However, they don't put the money in the bank, you know, so the money, when you cannot trace it, when you cannot verify the income, immediately you, you want to tell that person that you're not the realtor for them because you know that the other side, the listing agent, is going to ask you for this information and if you can't provide it, you're spinning, you're spinning your wheels and you're going to waste time. What I want you to do is work with customers that you know are going to be a, a potential candidate for you to rent and put yourself in the other, in the other side. If you're the one receiving the information from an agent, you want to make sure that the information comes correct, it's easy to understand, and that the person makes enough money to rent your place. The rule of thumb in real estate, the person needs to earn three times the rent amount. If the rent is $1,000, they need to show you that they make $3,000 a month. It could be combined between husband and wife, it could be themselves, wherever they get money from. If they get disability, if they get social security, whatever it is they're getting, you want to see where that comes from. You also want them to provide you a tenant application. An application is a history of that person, who they are, where they've lived, you know, where they work, how much money they make. It gives you a quick, a quick history of the person to know if they're going to be a potential candidate. 
Do not be afraid to ask tenants, do you have a criminal history? Tú eres un delincuente, sí o no. Right? You can ask them because you need to know. And they're going to more or less shy away a little bit, but you need to know, do you have felony record? No, you know, 20 years ago, I was uh, stopped for marijuana. Okay. Maybe you can, you can work with that. But if they say, yeah, I have a criminal history for domestic violence and blah, 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 then you know it right away. Um, it's going to be really hard for us to get you accepted with a person, so maybe I'm not the, the, the realtor for you. you know, so you're starting to filter out the people who you think you can work with and who you cannot work with. Okay? Estamos bien hasta ahora. All right. When I send you a lead and you have that interview conversation and you move on to the next step that you know that they are potentially a good tenant, they work at Baptist Hospital, they, they make great money, you know, they don't have any criminal history and they want to rent a house, you know, $2,000, right? You start to ask them, where do you want to live? I want to live in this area. Okay, how many bedrooms and bathrooms? I want three bedrooms, two baths. Do you want a garage? Yeah, man, no, not necessary. Is it okay if you live in a gated community? No, I don't want to live in a gated community because I have a, a big truck. I manejo una rata. I drive an 18 wheeler truck. Okay, is it okay if you have a one story house or two story? Do you have parents that need to walk upstairs? So you're still discovering all of this information so that when you begin to send them info, you're not bombarding them with properties that they don't want to see. So you're doing really good on your details of what they want, right? 